Um, you know, a couple years ago, I went to Diane Feinstein and, and uh, this pending this, this pending court settlement with the Friant and the NRD uh, suing the the NRDC suing Friant, winning in court with the judge. Uh, Carlton threatening to rule with a meat cleaver if they didn't, after 18 years, sit down and figure out how to make this court decision work. Um, it was my desire to go to Senator Feinstein and say we can build, we can develop a, probably do a better job than the judge could of uh, developing a way to get out of this thing. It was my hope that she would support legislation to just avoid the court decision. And uh, it was not her desire to want to do that, so in order to get a senator, which you have to have in order to get anything done, we had to <clears throat> see if we could put together an agreement that did abide by the court decision to return a salmon run down the Seven King River. And I had no confidence that, uh, that that they would come up with anything. And indeed, the first couple meetings just kind of um, uh, proved that fact and uh, you know proved why over 18 years they were not able to sit down to settling parties and come up with a plan that would uh, return the salmon fishery and still be acceptable to the water users in the area. But they settled on a, a couple of things that, that began to give hope and uh, began to persuade Friant, the 22 water districts from Chantilla to Bakersfield, a sense that yes, maybe there's something that we can do. One is the reliance on the, on the court settlement of a hydrograph, which is the historical record of river flows on the San Joaquin River, and the agreement by the settling parties that the water would flow like nature flow. In dry years, there would be very little water that was turned down the San Joaquin River for the salmon. In very wet years, there'd be a lot. Anywhere between zero in dry years to 250,000 acre feet in a very wet year. And then everything in between, just depending on how nature supplied water up into the Sierras. That was the one thing I think that, that got Fryan's uh, attention and, th and they thought that maybe there's something we can do here. The second thing was the ability to buy back, to buy back water um, when the farmers don't need it at a price that they can afford. During the wet years, uh, when, they, when they had places to store water, uh, they, prior to this agreement, they were not able to purchase back that water at a decent price in order to stock up for water that was lost during the growing season. And the third was the recirculating ability, which is now coming into big question, of the water that was put down the river, the possibility of getting it back as it was recirculated through the delta, through the state water systems on the west side, and get some of that water back after it was turned down the river. And those were the three elements that uh, the negotiators for Fryan said, though we can we could probably do this. So the parties to the lawsuit, NRDC, Fryan Water Users, and the Bureau of Reclamation, all thought that they could that, that something could be done, and we reached an agreement. Then we had to go to all the settling, uh, all the uh, uh, in, uh, the interested third parties. We had Merced Irrigation District, Modesto, Turlock on the on the on the part of the Sierras below the Delta, and then we had Westlands Water Users, Metropolitan Water Districts, a, a number of places that we had to go through because we didn't want a court decision that was going to adversely affect third parties. Uh, that was the agreement between uh, Feinstein and myself, and then we. Finally got them in the room and answered all their questions and lo and behold, everybody signed off on this thing. And um, uh, it's, it's, there were a couple of things that happened that have made it a bit more difficult and made it less free sailing than, than we thought it would be. One was that we lost the majority, or I did, in the, in the House of Representatives and, and uh, Tem Democrats took control and instituted something called PAYGO, which is pay as you go, meaning there would be no bills paid uh, unless you identify the funding sources with it, as opposed to uh, adding to the deficit or increasing taxes. Now, I think that's a terrific concept, but I think that they're using that as an excuse to raise taxes down the line. And forgive me, I'll, I, I do tend to be partisan occasionally. And, 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 but that became a reality for this bill because that was $170 million in this very expensive gamble to return some fish to, down the San Joaquin River. Uh, uh, and, and those the funding sources had to be identified. And the second thing was the wager decision that was uh, ruled in August of last year. And a simple comment in the in the books when NRDC was testifying in that that if they couldn't get water to uh, to uh, fix the Delta problem, they could easily just go to Fry and get more. 
And, uh, and that's what kind of blew up a lot of the controversy that's in the bill right now, and there's, a, there's an effort afoot to stop it. But uh, it's, it's just generated a lot of mistrust in, in the community.